Hey folks, as you can see, we're very crowded. This is Yura. Hey guys. And this is Tujin. Hola. Uh, so we did a cable A-B test recently, um, a blind A-B test. And let me tell you, not many publications, individuals, or channels will do blind A-B tests. And I think we're the first one, right? I think so. I was definitely blind. Yeah, I mean, blind. I see like um, recordings, like doing a blind A-B test kind of situation, but I haven't really seen um, the way we did it, which we had six people, including my girlfriend, uh, Nick, Yura, Tujin, myself, and the table owner, Nilish. It's, it's actually Nilish. 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 Yeah. Sorry. Um, and we had six people do this test. Now, of course, there's limitations. Um, a true blind A-B test would entail at least 100 people, which is not possible. Real blind tests also require a hell of a lot of money. Um, and budgeting. So that's not in the books as well, unfortunately. And so we did our best, but let me tell you, I'll be the first to, to admit that this is not a perfect blind A-B test. So keep that in mind. Um, but we did find some very interesting things in this uh, blind A-B speaker cable test that we did. And for myself, I did 10 runs and I'll link in the description below uh, the link to the entire video, I had a camera on me at all times. It will be a boring, boring video if you look at look at the entire video, but um, it will at least tell you that uh, I had a camera and the blinds on me at all times and the test. So um, first of all, before we reveal the actual testing, uh, let's talk about some of the limitations that went through in the test and why the blind A-B test was so hard to do. Tijin. Uh, I think one of the first things is just fatigue. We were there for yeah. a long time and when you have six people, consistently testing and switching cables, it takes a long time. Yeah, and let's be very clear. Uh, let's be civil in the comments section because, uh, you know, uh, we, other than myself, you know, there were people that could have spent their time um, in better places, <laughs> but they decided to do this uh, with us. And that's the other thing, you know, there's very little people that would do this and put themselves out there in a uh, public platform to do this because it can potentially ruin their reputation if they can't hear their friends or if they can hear their friends, you know, vice versa. Oh, yeah. They're really putting themselves on the spot here. That's one of the reasons why publications and reviewers don't do this is because of that exact issue. But we decided to do it because we're stupid and we decided that this will be an interesting thing to do. Right, Yura? That was an amazing experience for sure. <laughs> it was fun. It was really fun. Yeah. Well, for the first, you know, Yeah, hour. and we stayed like four hours. Um, it was way past our midnight. bedtime. Yeah. Yeah, it was way past Tujin's bedtime. Um, yeah. You know, he's a grow growing man, boy. Boy. Man, boy. Anyways, uh, so we went past midnight and everyone was really tired and the fatigue factor started kicking in. So we could only do five runs per person. And we chose five different tracks. Uh, so each run was with, done with a different track that the person chose themselves that they were familiar with. And there's a very um, controversial thing about how you do the test in this way is because people believe that they need to do it with the same track over and over again. Well, to do a proper blind A-B test, what would entail is listen to the track and then come back the next day or three hours later and listen to it again. This is largely due to a factor called desensitization. Anyone want to explain what that is? Essentially, if you hear the same thing over and over again, you start not hearing anything, no, no difference at all. Your body or yeah. your, your brain just stops picking up any of those yeah, differences. Yeah, so the stimuli being the track in this case and, or the listening, um, the auditory senses, if you listen to it over and over again, you know, things start to blend in and sound exactly the same, even if there is a difference. So that's an incorrect way to do a blind A-B test. So to get rid of that, what we did was choose different tracks because <laughs> let's, let's be real, we're not coming back each day. It will take us months to do this test. We don't have that kind of budget. In fact, we had no budget for this. You know, we, we all did volunteer with free working people. volunteer work, yes. And largely Patreon was a big part of um, helping us do this as well. Um, so that's one way. Now, the problem here is that you introduce another factor, which is, uh, you know, depending on the track, if there is any difference with the cables, it will be favorable to a certain type of cable, right? Mm -hmm. So if cable A is you no know, better for jazz, then it will be, uh, you know. I think, I think one of the things was identifying 
you know, if you can hear a difference between the cables and mm-hmm. then understanding um, which, which one mean? cable sound better than the other for that specific track, is, is right. it, you know, what, what's right. the difference in opinion? Yeah, so that kind of thing would be an issue. Um, now, we didn't find this to be a big issue in this case because in real life situations, nobody's listening to the same track over and over again. We just play different tracks each time, yeah. at least for me. So in this case, we were testing for more real life situations in a you know, real environment. Now, the other factor is um, for a blind A-B test, you have to be in a very controlled setting, which is basically, you know, temperature is one. Oh, you have yeah. to have consistent temperature. Um, you have to be in a perfect condition with no noise or very little noise, if any. Um, so very ideal situation for a blind A-B test would be everything, every other variable should be isolated, removed, or controlled for other than your auditory senses, which is impossible to do. And if it's even possible, it will cost hell a lot of money and very discomforting experience for the person. My man is uh, unemployed at the moment. Anyways, um, <laughs> you know, and having the blinds, um, let me tell you, that was uncomfortable in itself. For two hours straight, I had my blinds on and my eyes uh, towards the end was like, you know, really. really they were uh, very interesting blinds. Yes. Um, so anyways, uh, the whole point was that it was not a perfect blind A-B test, but it was interesting enough that we would be able to share. Now, we had six people and we would have to have 100 people at the very minimum to achieve what's called a significant result. Okay, that means you have to have 100 people doing the test and that's not gonna happen um, because first of all, you know, we can't hire, hire 100 people. We don't even have 100 people. So one thing we did was when I went um, to do my test, I took my very expensive recording microphones and recorded a track that I, I personally thought uh, was the best track to uh, see the difference. And I uploaded the track onto my community page and I had around 100 people vote for the different types of cables. And I'll show you the screenshot of the result right now. And as you can see, the uh, results are very, very interesting. Uh, I'll, let, I'll tell you right now, the Cable A was the less expensive cable, which was the Blue Jean cable for about 120 US. And then we had the B, which was the expensive cable, the $4,800 cable. And uh, so uh, that was the result. And that result really doesn't tell you much other than the fact that people actually prefer the less inexpensive cable. Uh, what's more interesting is actually the test results that went through with us because we were actually there listening. Mm-hmm. So uh, all in all, um, let's start with my girlfriend, Rebecca. Now, I wanted Rebecca to come along and do this test because she's a woman and women hear differently. I'm not being sexually very sexist, <laughs> sexist but it, it, it is true that women hear differently. So I want to... They apparently need to be able to hear a baby cry. Anyways, um, yes. You said that word for word. Yes, it is. So basically, uh, Rebecca... Uh, result was quite interesting because she in the film said she could hear a difference like right away yeah, uh, yeah. She, she in fact she didn't even know what the hell we were doing she was she just she just got dragged on because all the friends were going to you know this place and we we're hearing difference between cables um, now she didn't really know what she was hearing you know what was even changed really until you know later uh, but she was the first to admit she was like yeah here I hear a massive you know difference and she said it was an obvious difference. And uh, even though she could hear the difference between you know, the cables, as she would state, uh, she uh, actually yielded a insignificant result. So she chose three times the cheaper cable and then two times the less expensive cable, which scientifically speaking means nothing. Yeah. It means that there's no significant difference between the cables. Yet, she was very confident that she heard the difference between the cables and nobody told her there was a difference in, in the cables. Mm-hmm. Um, in fact, she, she didn't even know the price point of different cables either. So she was the most, uh, for the lack of better words, the cl- clueless, <laughs> um, clueless in terms of the variables involved or the audiophile world. You know, she likes music, but she also plays music, but she's not really into the things like, you know, speakers, amplifiers like we are. So I found that to be quite interesting how she was certain. And even despite after this test and this result, she was clear in, the, in, her, in her head that speakers, speaker cables can sound different. So 
maybe I tainted her, I don't know. But uh, that was her result, which I found quite interesting because nobody, especially myself, I never influenced her to tell her cables sound different. I never told her cables sound different. There, there was nobody that influenced her that way. So I found that to be very interesting. Now the second result and less interesting is Nick. Yep. Um, he also yielded a uh, you know, in, in, insignificant result, which was three cheap. He chose three cheap and two expensive, just like Rebecca. And uh, Nikhil here actually made a quite interesting point, and actually everyone did, but Nikhil, mm -hmm. I think, was the first one to admit that it depended really on the track that he listened to in which he preferred. Because the question we asked was, can you tell a difference? No, that was not the question we asked. We asked the question, which one do you prefer? Is it yeah. A or is it B? Yeah. Because it was a blind A-B test, you know, asking if you heard a difference would be meaningless. Mm -hmm. The person can easily say yes or no, depending on her mood. So we ha they had to choose one or uh, they could choose none, right? So uh, Nick uh, chose insignificantly, but he also admitted that it depended on the track. And Rebecca also said the same thing, which I forgot to mention. Um, so Nick Hill, and then we have uh, Neelish, who was the cable owner of the, the, the expensive cable owner that we went over to do the test with. And he, his result was also insignificant, but also quite consistent. Um, so he chose the cheaper cable. He actually preferred a cheaper cable three times in a row. And then he chose the less expensive cable, uh, sorry, the more expensive cable, his own cables two times in a row, which was quite interesting. Now, Neelish actually made a very interesting point here, and uh, that's that he played better recordings on the second uh, two last ones. And I also, I think we need to mention that we did three tests, and mm -hmm. then we took like a little break in between. Yes. So, yeah, we, so we did three tests, and then we changed to someone else, and then we came back and uh, did the remaining two tests. Um, that is really not that significant. That was to minimize the, again, the desensitization the and to give, yeah. Yeah, to give the person a break from the ear fatigue of listening uh, consecutively. Because you have to understand, if you listen to five, then you're listening to ten times, right? Yeah, of the same. one cable, then exactly. the other. So it could be mind, you know, uh, mentally... Um, you know, hard to, hard to perceive yeah. the sound, yeah. Yeah, hard to, yeah. you know, uh, yeah, concentrate. So we did three runs and then we paused in two runs. But in the second run, uh, Neelish chose better recordings and uh, he chose his more expensive cable. Again, scientifically looking at it, uh, his results yield basically nothing. That the cable wasn't statistically, yeah, statistically insignificant, yeah. that they don't make a difference. Now we come to Tujin's result, this man right here, and then now the results become quite interesting. So he chose uh, four times the expensive cable and then one time the cheaper cable. Um, and he was able to tell, even though he said he preferred, on the third track, he said he preferred the cheaper cable, but he was able to guess that it was the expense, he was able to guess which cable was which. Yeah. So in that sense, he was able to guess which cable was which all five times in a row. So that actually yields a significant result in the fact that he can actually hear the difference between cables. Um, and then we have Yura here who had exactly the same result. She preferred the expensive cable five times in a row. And on the fifth track this time, he said he enjoyed the uh, less expensive cable on the fifth track, but he was able to guess that the other one that he didn't prefer on the fifth track was the more expensive cable and the ones that he chose um, all this time. And that result leads to my result, which is the one that will be in the description below, which I was able to consecutively guess which cable was which nine times in a row. And I was able to, uh, and, and I guess, um, and then I preferred 80% of the time, I preferred the expensive cable, which was actually a surprise to me because I quite like the blue jean cable, which is $120. Now the question here is, now while this is all very interesting, and I think I'm the one talking too much, but uh, um, it, while this is all interesting in that people can perhaps notice a difference depending on their uh, listening habits or the tracks they chose, or perhaps the choice of music or um, you know the experience they have, right? So for mm -hmm. example, it seems to me that, at least the way I look at it, Euro has, um, you know, quite extensive taste, taste, or sure. or experience in the audiophile world. I, for myself, I've done you know 
uh, uh, I got, I have trained myself to listen to first certain things, and I got um, you know um, my career as a reviewer involves a lot of that. And um, Tujin here, obviously, I hi- hired him because he can listen to a certain extent. Um, just to put it out there, I personally thought I wasn't going to hear a difference at all. Um, yeah. Oh, that's the yeah. other thing that we probably have to mention. There's so much things to mention. That's yeah. why we're doing this kind of you know kind yeah. of yeah. video because there's yeah. so much information that we need to pack. I started to uh, you know start to write it down and I just thought we should just do this like legitimately for me when I look for a cable I just look for a solid build quality yeah. and something that just looks nice I don't yeah. buy cables yeah. assuming that's going to change the sound yeah. of my system yeah so it, it, it's it's funny because nobody expected to hear any type of difference when we got there mm-hmm. in fact um, Tujin here was very skeptical he was like yeah you know this test is gonna basically prove that cables don't matter and I, for myself, I, I, I've heard differences in cables, but in a blind setting, I was very doubtful that I would pass with a significant, you know, kind of st- yeah. statistical meaning. Um, but what was interesting is that out of the six people, only three people yielded, you know, in any you know, scientifically significant way. Yet in the film that I am about, I'm about to show you after this clip, you're able to tell, you know, when I tell, ask people, you know, did you hear a difference? Every single one said, yeah, they hear a difference. Mm-hmm. Now, yes, you can argue that because the first person said, you know, yes, they can hear a difference, and the second person yeah. said, yes, they can hear a difference. But through the entire testing, each person was, you know, saying, oh, I can hear a difference in yeah. their in their in their own way. When and was, I can still remember what I, you know, what, what difference, was the difference I heard. Yeah. yeah, it was literally like a change in like the the sound stage. Yes, and how the mids were perceived. So the 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 expensive cable seemed to have more sound stage. Yeah. Correct. So that was the funny thing is actually the recording that we put up, not only did people, uh, the online you know, survey, yeah. not, not, and I didn't tell people that this was a cable A-B test. Yeah. <laughs> so people are just guessing based on the recording. Mm-hmm. I said, I changed one component. That's all the clue I, they, I gave them. Yeah. And that was cables. And funny enough, I, without any clue or any kind of uh, you know, prior anything, people were commenting in the comment section of that community post saying that the B had a larger soundstage. So that was just off of recording. And I didn't upload to YouTube because of the compression and all that stuff. So I, it was a file download. So people that actually had a revealing system or the ability to you know, decipher between the two said the B had a wider soundstage. Yet a lot of people preferred the A because it was more intimate. Um, more in focus almost. More in mm-hmm. focus almost. And so that was quite interesting. And I had a very much same experience. It was easily deciphered uh, for me because the recording I personally played was, uh, that was obvious, was the Yazoo um, track that I no, recorded. And if you listen to that track, that's a live recording. So it basically, the sound stage, I'm very familiar with that track. So I was able to decipher the, you know, the sound stage difference between the two cables very easily. Mm-hmm. In fact, it took me only about a minute and 30 seconds into the track for me to say and then t- uh, tell Neelish uh, to change the cables and vice versa. So anyhow, um, but with this all being said, yes, I think that concludes that some of us, you know, with some type of experience in listening and listening for certain things can tell a difference. Um, however, is it worth it? Is it because the cable difference, the price difference this year is $120 to $4,800. Yeah, this whole experience just made me more adamant about my perspective, which is like, yes, okay, cables can make a difference, but that's something that I would put last when building a system. I want to get the right DAC for me. I want to have the right synergy within my system and then have some fun with cables because I think cables and tweaks are something that, you know, it's it's for fun. Yeah, Yeah. it's sort of the fun of being an audiophile. So for you, was it worth it? Do you think, do you think it's worth it to get uh, that kind of difference in price? Um, just uh, based off sound, it would be my last priority, really. Um, I don't know if I would just justify spending that much, but if, let's say, a cheaper cable mm-hmm. can give me that presentation, mm-hmm. that difference, I would go with the one with more soundstage okay. because that's what I prefer. How about you, Yura? Right. If you would uh, put me in the same setup with two cables, I would enjoy the more expensive cable probably mm-hmm. more but if it comes bo- comes to my own preference and if i would be building my system as tujin mentioned there is something i guess more that has more priority to me 
and the cable would go last. Yeah. So for me, I, I think I have a similar answer, but a little bit different one. So first of all, the reason I chose the $120 Blue Jean cable is because the Blue Jean cable is very good. By the way, I bought the Blue Jean cable. It's not sponsored. Yeah. Nothing like that. Um, I chose the Blue Jean cable because I had prior experience with the Blue Jean cables. I found it quite good for the price. And also, uh, you know, scientifically speaking, it measures well. Uh, it, it's proper gauge of wire. Now, I see often people using lamp cord or zip wire or whatever. And um, if you go to Home Depot and actually compare it, um, I've done this test and maybe we'll do it one day on, you know, on a blind A-B test as well. The, the difference is too obvious for me to use that kind of wire and an expensive cable. It, you know, that, that testing would be less interesting, at least to me. I think this is more real world. Yeah, you know? more real world. $120 is a very reasonable price for the cable. And you know, it can even get less if you decide to go with shorter lengths. I think I had a pretty longer length one, um, you know, normal 2.5 meter-ish. Yep. And so, um, and the, the reason I chose that cable is, let's be real. Audioholics, <laughs> yeah. um, they vouch for that cable because it measures well, it was measured well by Bougins themselves and Audioholics. So I thought it would make perfect sense for us to use it as a tool to to the test. I have no problems with the Bougin cable. I've used it myself. And at the end of the day, my result, you know, at least to me concluded, yes, I can hear a difference, but the price difference is not justified. And the other factor that I actually want to, uh, so let's be clear, I will never buy an expensive cable to put in my system. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm perfectly happy with Blue Jean cables. But that really depends on you. Like That the, depends the, on the you. Owner if of you system, want to, you know, kind of tweak yeah. the last. And, but the reason I would personally not put an expensive cable in my system, period, and I'll stick with the Blue Jean cable is precisely this. Uh, Blue Jean cables have the right capacitance or you know, um, resistance as well. And it measures uh, uh, to a certain extent with no bullshit. No, none of these, you know, skin effects, uh, you know, unicorn spray or any of that shit. I, I love reading um, the, and uh, actually, the technology that exactly. goes into expensive and, cables. And, you know, for, you know, and 75 ohm for, you know, coaxial or you know, um, digital cables. And it, it just makes sense to me that a cable manufacturer should put those kind of specs. Let's be real. Let's be real. Amplifiers, yeah. wattage. Every company puts a wattage rating, even though it's almost meaningless in some, some ways, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Sometimes you, we already know that wattage doesn't equal you know, driving capability. Mm -hmm. Hegel, you know, 75 watts can drive a magnet pan, 200 water. I knew you were going to bring up magnet pan. Yeah, well, that's it's like the, the best <laughs> example. 200 water amplifier, like Meitner monoblocks I've seen struggle with. Yeah. So it depends on a lot of factors. But even even though that's the case, manufacturers still put out spec, uh, specs. Mm -hmm. You know, specs, we always say specs don't tell the entire story of how something sounds, mm -hmm. but it's still there as to show people there's nothing wrong with the amplifier. It's a standard rating. Mm -hmm. It's a standard rating. If, if an amplifier, you know, is able to output certain amount of power at certain rating, there needs to be an industry standard. And for cables, simple as resistance rating. Mm -hmm. mean I'll go anything. to AudioQuest and I, I know a lot of people put down AudioQuest, but I go to AudioQuest cables uh, website and uh, the other day and Nordos all these other high-end manufacturing cable companies and not a single rating, no number. There's no standardization. There's no standardization. There's no, you know, USB 90 ohms, you know, 70, none of, no resistance rating, no frequency, no nothing, you know, not to prove, but just to show the people that it has correct impedances, right? Correct ratings so that it's safe to use in your system without, you know, you know that kind of thing. Cause Let's face it, if it has a different impedance rating, the change in sound can be due to that. Mm -hmm. And that's probably one of the reasons that you can argue that we heard a difference is that the, the cable we used was flat. Mm -hmm. We know that the, reasons, that the problem with flat cables is the uh, problem with capacitance. Okay, so this all yields to uh, many different reasons why you may hear a different, uh, difference in cables and perhaps, you know, I don't know because we, we 
we don't know. <laughs> Let's be very clear. Uh, we don't know. Maybe the difference we heard was because there was something wrong with the expensive cable being flat. Okay. And, uh, you know, all these cables coming up with these, you know, marketing terms, that's perfectly fine by me, but at least have a rating so that people know whether if it's flat or, or round, whatever, whatever it is, that it is safe to use in the system without any, you know, any of the differences coming from difference in specs or, you know, wrongs, you know, impedances or whatnot. So that's what, that's the reason I would personally not use any brands, uh, any, any brands cables that don't have a rating, right? Cause I don't want to put a 60 ohm or 50 ohm coax cable into my system and hear a difference. And that difference coming from, you know, perhaps the fact that it's the wrong impedance. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's my reasoning. So anyways, for me personally, it is not worth it. I, I would stick with the uh, cables that have a rating. Um, USB cables like Sop Sopra cables that have a 90 ohm rating. That's what I would go with for USB cables. Coax cables, you know, 75 ohms rating. You know, some kind of rating or measurement to show that it is safe to use. Not exactly how it sounds, but safe to use, right? And I would be very interested one day because I couldn't find a single cable that's expensive and has a rating. Mm -hmm. That's sad. I want to one day have a speaker cable that has the right ratings versus the blue jean cable that has the right ratings. Mm -hmm. Then we can significantly say that the difference that we heard was not due to the differences in specs, in, in the wrong specs of the expensive cable or the non-stated specs, I should say. Mm -hmm. So that's my finding in this test. I think we dragged this video long enough. I think that was interesting for us to do. Um, if you liked the video, click like, make sure you're subscribed. If you're not already subscribed, hit that bell notification and we'll see you guys on the next one. Peace. Okay, so we're using uh, Merrill Veritas uh, D-Class amplifiers. Um, I guess uh, they go down to two ohm, 1200 uh, RMS per channel. Uh, although we're probably, the speakers probably don't even need more than 600 anyway. I'm using an ATC preamp, which is a studio, uh, actually studio meant for recording. So it's got recording outs for every channel. So it's actually a studio preamp uh, by ATC. The DAC we're using is a Berkeley Alpha DAC. Uh, and um, everything is going into the ANSUS power conditioner. Uh, the wall outlets also are FuruTech wall outlets. The speaker... Uh, is reference uh, the company's reference 3A, which is Canadian, and this is their flagship. Well, was their flagship speaker. I think they have something newer now, um, which is called the Grand Vena. And uh, the speaker wire, uh, uh, MG Audio Design, and uh, uh, most people are running USB, but I'm running a, a, a PS Audio Land Rover uh, because my computer is much farther away, so it's using uh, network cabling and then USBs on either either end. So that... And how much are the speaker cables, uh, uh, uh They retail for uh, 4,800 US, so that's about, I'd say about what, 6,200 maybe Canadian? Okay. Something like that. Okay. Speakers, I think, retail now, uh, they're still in their product line, so that's probably about 9,000 retail. Mm -hmm. And uh, amps are about 15,000 Canadian, mm -hmm. uh, 12,000 US. The uh, preamp is probably also about 12, 12 13,000 Canadian. Uh, Alpha DAC is probably about 5,000 US, so let's say just, just under 6,500 Canadian. Uh, this whole setup, because, uh, counting the tweaks, is just short of 100,000, I would say. Okay. The, the entire system, including room treatment and everything, is probably just, with room treatment, it's probably just over 100 grand. When are we ready? Alright, just waiting on Jay. Okay. It's late. We're good? Good.
I would say the first one. The first one? Yes. Okay. Now pick another song. Now you can take off your blinds and uh, shoot another song. Because it's called desensitization. <laughs> if you listen to the same one, that's the problem with the A-B test. You get used to it. It's that you use the same track over and over again. Right? You get this. Maybe look for something with like more changes. depth or more, uh, more depth. depth. Uh, like higher, maybe higher. Uh, and we're not testing desensitization, so this is one variable that we're trying to get rid of. Is play different tracks each time. So, not really terrific. Um, in one case, I feel um, in first song, I would say, not this one. I felt a bit more clarity to one of the cables. Um, but in the other case, it, I felt like it was like more of a like a bit wider presentation. So it was like clarity versus presentation. Okay. from my sensations. You okay? Uh, okay, who's doing the second point? Or is it we're doing a song? No, you have to do this five times. Five times, okay. So pick one more song. <sighs> okay. Keep it on, keep it on. Don't take it off, it's a surprise. You good there, Nyash? Yeah, I'm good. Okay? Okay. So. Never knew a moment could feel so right. Could slow down time like this. Everything I needed is in your eyes and in your mind. Maybe it's crazy to fall so soon. Give it all to you. One. That was really weird, man. Which one? Uh, Why? because with the second one, I found it more like spread out a little, like more like, and then the, with the first one, the vocals were more like serious, like more uh, apparent. That, oh, more apparent, more forward. Yeah, more forward. Um, <laughs> preference-wise, I think the second one was more surprising, so I'd go with the second one. So uh, when you say surprising, like. like like I didn't expect that uh, for like the background noises or like the, the noises in the background mm -hmm. uh, to expand so much. Alright. Okay. Next track. First one or second one? Okay, so this one was close just because this song already has really good imaging. Mm -hmm. And then I feel like uh, with the second cable, everything was more like intimate but in focused. With the first mm -hmm. cable, it cr tried to spread out the instruments more, mm -hmm. which is what I thought I heard for the so I'm thinking the first one is the expensive cable mm -hmm. that's just, just well, which, yeah. okay. which, but like which what I would better? what I would prefer is the second one like okay. hands down I liked I liked what the second one did mm -hmm. okay much clearer yeah the, the second one was like holy crap mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. I, from the very the, the first the first one it sounded blurry like uh out, it was almost like Is out it? of focus yeah mm -hmm. and then this just Locked in and the impact and everything just mm -hmm. comes at you. As soon as the vocals came in, yeah. it just sounded way clearer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The I really, one? Uh, the second. No, second. The second one? Yeah. When uh, the voice is more fleshed out, uh, it's a little more forward. The, the uh, violin is smoother. Uh, there's more depth, more separation. Uh, there's more separation, there's more depth, 
Uh, there's, it's clear. His voice at the top is way more clear. The people in the background are way more clear. Uh, yeah, there's not even, it's, it wasn't even close. The background was the most noticeable. Yeah. Yeah, anything that has a lot of depth, the speaker cleans up the sound in the background, so it's cleaner and you can hear a, clear, uh, a, more, a further depth or separation. For, uh, I, I really liked the first one better. Like, this one just seemed like it was uh, too messy. Like, I don't know, there was something, like, it just didn't, when I heard the first one, it sounded clean and this was just, like, blah. Like, it found, there was too much bleeding going on. So right away I was like, oh, I don't like this. Okay, everyone. So, very late and everyone's tired. Thank you so much. Welcome. For letting us do this. Uh, it's like, what time is it? It's like well, past 12? Yeah, past, yeah, yeah. It's close to 12. So, yeah, everyone's gonna 12. go home. Uh, it feels but, like 4. <laughs> yeah. I want to ask uh, uh, each one of you, did you hear a clear difference? Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's, there's a difference between the two cables. And what did you believe before? Uh, the cables honestly did not make a difference. But, okay. to be fair, it, it's more about preference, in a sense, because yeah. the, it's just a presentation of the music that kind of changes, mm -hmm. and it's... But, okay, it's a simple question, because everyone's tired. Yes, they make a difference. Was it an obvious difference? It was, it was quite obvious with the tracks I've used. Okay. Very tired, Rebecca. How about you? If, if you like to listen to... Rock? No, was there an obvious difference? Yes, there is an obvious difference. Okay, but... perfect. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, there was an obvious difference in the cables. A lot has to do with the actual track that you're listening to mm -hmm. and how it's mastered. Makes a bit more of a difference to notice the differences. And our golden year boy, you're on. There is a difference. Again, preference, as uh, Dujun mentioned, and depending on the track. What I found uh, interesting with you is that the last one, you actually prefer the cheaper one. But you were able to guess that the, yeah. the other one was what you were listening to. Because uh, especially to. with this track, I wanted more clarity. Yeah. And in that sense, cheaper, I would say, provided a little bit more clarity. Yeah. But it was like, like from, but, from yeah, my... But, but what, I, what, what I'm saying is, it was very interesting that you knew yeah, that the yeah. other one that you didn't prefer for that track mm -hmm. was the mm -hmm. one that you chose mm -hmm. for the other mm -hmm. ones, right? So yeah. that was yeah. very yeah. interesting. Yeah. Okay, how about you, Nailish? Okay, well... What did you find? Well, I knew that obviously there was a difference. I, I didn't think I was going to like the other one so much, but yeah. but it was a warmer sound. It was more focused yeah. than my yeah, like uber that. expensive cable. But when I wanted wide soundstage, yeah. I mean, and depth, I, I, usually my cable was on top for that. So a few differences, but... Uh, awesome. So thank you, everyone. You made it. As uh, everyone you was made it. <laughs> let, let's try it.